Coming up, an Eastern Kentucky man is now charged with the murder of his 12-year-old daughter. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A Johnson County father is now accused of shooting and killing his own 12-year-old daughter. He was taken from a medical facility in Lexington to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center today. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has the latest from the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. After Johnson County Sheriff's deputies found Stacy Collins in the Van Leer area with what they believed to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound and later found his missing daughter, 12-year-old Stacia Collins, shot and killed nearly two miles away, he is now behind bars after being treated for his injuries. We executed an arrest warrant on Mr. Stacy Collins. He was picked up in Lexington at a medical facility and transported back to the Sandy Regional Detention Center. Collins' arrest warrant charged him with the murder of his daughter, but the Sheriff's Department is still investigating the case, ensuring that no stone is left unturned. We plan to execute every available resource that we have to have a good, strong, solid case to prosecute the person that is responsible for this. And while the community continues to grieve, they're just tore out of pieces about this, so it's the bottom line. And as far as uh, the law enforcement here, it's tore us up. It's tore us up. I mean, this, this is something that well, we didn't want to see this little 12-year-old girl dead. There is still work to be done. There, there's a whole lot more that needs to be done on this. Uh, like I had stated previously, there's, uh, there's another charge that we'll probably be coming forth with uh, soon, um, uh, the harshest that we can get. Making sure justice is served. In Johnson County, Jordan Mullins, WIMT Mountain News. The case's lead investigator, Deputy Tim Clark, added the death penalty is not out of the equation and what happened to this young girl was, quote, inexcusable, unacceptable, and with absolutely no justification. Eastern Kentuckians and folks across the country said their final goodbyes today to prominent Hazard businessman L.D. Gorman. Gorman was born and raised in Hazard and was known for helping his fellow Eastern Kentuckians, but usually stayed behind the scenes. Gorman was a mentor to Hazard native and coal industry leader Joe Kraft, who says L.D. would always call him when there was a need in the mountains. He never had a bad day. Uh, he always had a smile on his face. He was always gracious, like Kelly said, and, and you know, he's just going to be missed. I mean, he's just part of my life. Others that attended Gorman's funeral included UK coach John Calipari, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice, and Donald Trump Jr. Gorman leaves behind a son and daughter, five grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Gorman was 97 years old. Well, our shower and storm chances are long gone, but fog is entering the picture now as we head through the overnight hours. Here's a look from our Pikeville Medical Center camera. A tick below 70 there at the moment, but that's not the main story. Plenty of fog already settling into the downtown region. That's something that we're going to see as we head through the nighttime hours. Notably, the airport sensor still says 10 miles, so it's, it's rather patchy, but you notice not far away. Logan, West Virginia has zero visibility, so don't take these as the gospel because these may not be at the airport. In fact, these are the airport sensors. The fog might not be at the airport, but as you head closer to those river valleys, that's something we're going to see tonight. Upper 60s to near 70 current temperatures right now. We are cooling off. We have some of that low-level moisture on Pinpoint Doppler, but that's it. Fog tonight, lows right around 60 as we continue to calm things down. I've got the very latest on how nice the weather gets the next couple of days in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. FEMA says it has given out now more than $92 million in federal flood assistance. That includes more than $53 million in approved individual assistance and it's going to more than 6,500 individuals and families. $10 million was also approved for other disaster-related needs. The Small Business Administration has approved more than $27 million in disaster loans. And the National Flood Insurance Program has paid out more than $11 million in claims. 
Folks in one eastern Kentucky county received free produce from their local farmer's market today. WYMT's Keaton Hall has more on the new program offering much needed support after the floods. Barbara Maggard is now a regular at the Knott County Farmer's Market. Yeah, I got me some beans, corn, tomatoes, and uh, <laughs> uh, potatoes, I think it is. Potatoes. Like many people, Maggard lost her ability to grow her own food following the flood. We lost everything in the garden that we had. And uh, the flood, it messed her, almost washed the the, up to the garage. The flood only making issues of food security worse in the region. You know, I've always considered myself more and more as a food social worker. Um, every year it's getting more and more like that as food security becomes more, more of a pressing issue. Every, every year it's worse and worse. But folks like Barbara Maggard are finding support in their communities as several farmers markets in the region are offering free produce. Um, so since the flood, our market, because of the um, a really generous uh, grant from the Lee Initiative for not Perry, Letcher, and Breathitt counties, we are able to offer free markets. Feeling a desperate need in the region. It's really hard to get fresh, fresh local good for you produce and at a good price. So these markets mean a lot and they're really important for us, uh, our food producers, and for our community. Looking to grow back stronger. In Knott County, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. The Knott County Farmers Market will meet for two more weeks on Tuesdays, offering free fruits and vegetables. The Appalachia Rises Come Hell or High Water Flood Relief Telethon raised more than $152,000 last night. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky says they have already distributed $1 million to people and businesses that were affected by the floods. And the CEO of the Foundation says this money will continue helping folks in our communities. It will allow us to help more of our small businesses that were underwater, to help our farmers, to help our nonprofits who are mucking out houses and helping people get back on their feet. If you would still like to donate to the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky, you can find a link on our website at WYMT.com. A Southern Kentucky man who runs his own social media site for weather-related events is coming up with a plan to put an Eastern Kentucky family in a new home. Daniel Wilson is from Russell County and recently visited the devastation in Breathitt County. He met a family that lost three homes. Wilson says he wants to see them get a new home, so he came up with a plan to raise $50,000. And the reason that we're trying to reach out and, and help these people is because a lot of the money is going for cleanup, uh, for food and, and, and different resources, rebuilding roads. The plan is to put them in a prefabricated home. It is only one step from one person, but it can go a long way for those that are in need. Berea College is sending help to Eastern Kentucky. The college president announced more than $1 million in funding. That will come through contributions to the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky, support for impacted school districts, and a donation to the Mountain Association to help Eastern Kentucky businesses. Berea's president said it's important to the college to help where they are needed. You know, we serve a campus here, but we really serve a region. So when a rainy day comes along for the region, we feel like we should be involved in that too. Berea College is also helping students impacted by the flooding. They were allowed to move in early, but college leaders say all decided to stay in Eastern Kentucky to help their families clean up. While many students across the region have returned to school now, Letcher County Public Schools remain vacant. In order to help students return to school sooner, state and national education officials visited schools in Letcher and Knott counties today to assess flood damage and to begin working on a plan to rebuild these schools. I want their attention on my district for the most positive things. I told uh, Chairman Young that she'll be back to celebrate uh, Letcher County Schools being Blue Ribbon Schools. So this is temporary. So it's good for them to see where we are now so that when we hit the top, they'll know how far we've come. U.S. Department of Education officials say impacted districts can apply for various Project SERVE grants to help them rebuild their schools. These grants are specifically for helping educational agencies following traumatic events. The Kentucky Blood Center is urging folks to roll up their sleeves and donate to the blood bank. 
They are critically low on, supp on supply of all types of blood right now. And because of this, they are giving away a 2022 Toyota RAV4. Anyone who donates between now and September 9th has a chance to win. There are KBC locations in Somerset, Corbin, and Pikeville. The Blaine Volunteer Fire Department will soon have a new station. Nine years after a fire station or after a fire took their station, firefighters are preparing to build a new structure to provide better service to their community. The project, which received $750,000 in grant funding, is years in the making. Officials say it's going to be a game changer for the area after years of working with scattered equipment. Depending on what kind of fire you go on to is what truck you take and what so if you got it all together, you can take what you need. I mean, it's going to be tremendous. Fire Chief Jeremy Wheeler expects to see the station complete by winter. The price of oil fell more than 5% in trading today. It settled at $91.64 a barrel to mark its lowest price in five weeks. Analysts believe the decline was fueled by worries over the world economy. Prices in the U.S. are 30% lower since spiking at more than $130 a barrel in March. That is translating to lower prices at gas stations for consumers. The national average for a gallon of gas is now $3.84. Prices at the pump have been falling for 77 days in a row. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, federal funds are pouring into eastern Kentucky to make sure students have the resources they need. Plus, much nicer conditions on the way as we head into the day tomorrow. The full breakdown is on the way.